Now, when I go to your class, if mm -hmm. I were to go to your class, mm -hmm. uh, is there literature involved, history about this, or is it just strictly hands-on? It's more hands-on. What hands I do on. is I have, have handouts and stuff like that. I usually give a little bit of a lecture of 20 minutes or so. Oh, so you of do give giving a little it an bit intro, of... as it were. Mm -hmm. And then we move right into it. Because depending on people's work levels and skills and such like that, they may need a little bit more time than others. Um, so, you know, with that task, you'll be making something like this size. Mm -hmm. And we use a book called 15 Pieces or Less. And it really kind of occupies all the time. So at, at the end of a beginner course, you'll have something such as this. Oh, yeah, yes, you can. And okay. then you can move on to other things, make something like the fish or the lighthouse or something like that, yes. Okay, and so yes. this takes four weeks, or do you do several? Oh, no, things? no. Uh, basically, because of that, you're learning different techniques and the know-how and the use of tools, the safety issue of it, mm -hmm. uh, the chemicals that you use, the soldering techniques and stuff like that. So it does occupy all the time uh, for a beginner. I mean, those have, this has less pieces than that, but, you know, it's basically all the same. Okay, so let's go through the classes. Basically, the, there's the first level class. The, yep, the, the beginner, beginner class. class. Uh, we have that. We also have what I refer to as a next class. The as next I class. said earlier, it's a point where individuals generally go and have something out there they want to do, like a transom window over a door, entranceway or something like that, or a big window in their house. In this class, we're still using the copper foil technique, but we get involved with the reinforcement, the structural aspect of windows. Um, we deal with uh, rebar, restrip, uh, strong line, and the like. These are all reinforcement tools. Uh, we also get involved with zinc cane. We'll surround it with zinc cane. And dimensionally make sure that it fits where you want it to fit. Make sure it's square and even and structurally sound. So that's part two. Yeah, it's kind of a stretch to some degree. I like to have people have a few projects under their belt, but I've had some very good luck with people moving from one right to the other class okay. and just you know getting beyond as it were. So as the, as the classes go on, they get more difficult? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot more work. As you become uh, more experienced. Yes. With the beginner class, I have, say, six, seven different designs. Mm -hmm. I'll go and have the students have to select from. From there, um, and in the next class, I do have designs available, but the students are able to bring their own. We'll critique it. We may have to redesign it for the medium, and then we move on. Okay. So it, it gets pretty exciting that way. Uh, from there... Uh, other class that we do is lead came. Lead came is the old school method using the old uh, lead method of assembling windows and stuff like that that you'd see mostly in the churches and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And different technique. So we're doing much the same type of work. The basis that you have from the beginner class or the next class can move on to the lead came, the accuracy of cutting. The assembly techniques and stuff like that are quite different and the manner in which one um, solders it up is different. But it works out fairly well. A lot of people go and take the lead cane and move on from there and go on. Mm -hmm. But we also uh, have smitherings of like mosaic classes. We'll go and do that and start a, a trivet or something of that nature to start out for a beginning piece. Uh, stepping stones, which are popular for the gardens, we do that also. Um, and provide the molds and everything else, which is kind of nice with that is it's only a one time, but it's about three hours to four hours, but you walk away with a complete finished piece, hmm. which is neat, which is fun. And cutting of glass isn't even required. You can simply use scraps that are available in the shop. And you provide scraps? Yes. For all the students in the classes, I provide scraps. I, of course, have tools, supplies, um, glass or anything else that you would require for the craft and we give 10% off right. to students during class periods. Now we have some photographs from your from the shop. Yes. Uh, let's, let's see what photographs we have and can you just tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here? Uh, this is uh, you know, simply a couple and Angel. 
-hmm. uh, for a hanging piece. So it was about 18 inches tall and uses iridized glass, which is a coated glass that kind of gives you the rainbow effect. And she's holding a lily. And on the other side, we have a wedding invitation. It's pretty elaborate. Actually, that wound up to be quite large. You can see the, the angel's about 18 inches. Well, the, the panel itself is about 16. And shows a bride and groom and ribbon and doves and such like that. Very beautiful. Okay, next slide. Uh, yeah, that's a, an oak box with a shamrock on it. Very uh, creative. And it uh, came out very well. Different color, green glasses and stuff like that. Here we have a Tiffany style lampshade. That's a peony lampshade of about, eh, about 300 pieces of glass in there of art glass. And here we have a couple more custom lamps. And here we have the panel lamps, two panel lamps that we've done. And these are actually two kitchen panels. The upper one is a kitchen panel that, uh, how big is that? 16 by 28, and that goes over their window. Oh, wow. So, so there's literally hundreds of different things you can do with glass. Oh, yes. Oh, definitely. Wow. You know, all sorts of shapes and sizes from small, you know, intricate detail, sun catchers, all the way up to full blown large windows. So, what are some and, of the most creative things you can do with glass? Well, I kind of like doing the, the Tiffany style lampshades. They're nice. They're fun. A lot of work, but uh, you know, they're illuminated the other way. Uh, my favorite still is the panels of making those, either eclectic style or traditional and stuff like that, because I love the way the light shines through them. Every time you look at it, any time, day or night, they look different. And I really enjoy that. We're also getting into fusible glass, where you can go and take glass and uh, melt it with a kiln and uh, fuse it to other pieces of glass and make objects that way. So you, you have this in your home, obviously, right? Okay, I look got a <laughs> few little pieces here and there. Maybe a little obsessive with it? Yeah, or? Not too bad, not, not too, too bad. bad. <laughs> I'm more of the mission style, Frank Lloyd Wright style, so I have many of those panels in my home. That works. Well, this, this seems very interesting. I thank you very much for coming on today, okay. sharing this with us. This is us. Uh, Steve Kodish from the Stain in the Glass. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thanks, John. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.